Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name is Camel, and today we are going to acquire the unique two-handed axe known as the Headsman's Axe. A weapon loved by many. In fact, some people even lose their head over it. A timestamp for the overview can be found down in the description of the video along with links to my social media and to my other Skyrim Special Edition guides. Be sure to check them out. Now this weapon is, ironically, not cutting edge, but sure is a hell of a lot of fun and boasts some interesting stats that could make it your weapon of choice. You probably saw this thing in the opening few minutes of the game and thought, I want that axe in my hand rather than on my neck. Luckily, acquiring it is easy enough. Firstly, we'll need to come to Skyrim's capital city, Solitude. On the map, it can be found up here, all alone, sitting in Solitude. Once here, make your way to Castle Dower, more specifically to the courtyard and main entrance, guarded by these two buffoons. Once inside, take a turn to the left and down the stone stairs to the Castle Dower dungeon. Once in here, walk all the way around the top level until you reach this room, within which is Atar, the Headsman of Solitude. Speak to him. You wouldn't be a sellsword, would you? I have a little problem you could solve. What's this problem you have? I may have accidentally let a prisoner escape, the leader of one of those bandit groups. I told everyone he died during questioning, and I need you to track him down and make sure he doesn't show up to disprove that. I'll do it. Star Wars reference there? Good. I'll have a sack of coin waiting for you when you get back. This will give us the miscellaneous quest objective to kill the bandit leader. Now apparently it's meant to be the bandit leader of Broken or Grotto, but I got a different location. Regardless, kill whoever he sends you to kill. It'll be marked on your map, which will make it nice and easy. And once the dirty has been done, head back to him. Orphan's Deer is free of bandits. That's a load off my mind. Here's your pay. Once we do that, he will now be available as a follower. What we want to do is select the option, follow me, I need your help. Let's not waste any time. Then go to, I need to trade some things with you. What do you need to take? Your axe. It's the first thing in his inventory. Take that bad boy. And once you take it, you can just dismiss him as a follower. No one needs him anymore. So now we have it. Let's take a look at it. The Headsman's Axe. It's got a base damage of 17, a swing speed of 0.7, which leaves us with a base DPS of 11.9. It's got a whopping reach of 1.5, a weight of 11, a value of 15. It cannot be upgraded, although with the Skyrim unofficial patch, it will be able to be upgraded upgraded with a steel ingot, however, it will not benefit from any smithing perks, meaning to upgrade it to legendary, you will need the assistance of smithing fortification effects, and its enchantment, it does not have one. So let's talk about the stats briefly. The base damage of 17 is terrible, and is actually the second lowest base damage of a two-handed axe in the game, right after the Iron Battle Axe. Its reach, however, is the longest in the game, meaning you can hit enemies at a great distance. I suppose this is the closest thing in Skyrim you can get to a polearm or a spear. You know those things they cut out that everyone wants back? But given this great distance, provided you move enough, you can essentially hold an enemy at arm's length, being able to hit them with your super long headsman's axe while their stumpy normal weapon can not reach you. This can be super useful if you can take advantage of that massive 1.5 reach. It will basically require a lot of running backwards. Now the weight is actually unusually light for a battle axe, clocking in at only 11, which is about half the weight of most other battle axes. Again, while it can't be upgraded normally, if you do have the unofficial patch, this will be changed. Although you won't be able to upgrade it very far unless you use smithing fortification effects. And while it is not enchanted, that leaves it as a blank slate, so you can slap on whatever enchantment you like. And provided your enchanting is a high enough level, you can enchant the Headsman's Axe to a usable level, making up for that massive gap of its very low base damage. Now in the base game of Skyrim, the Headsman's Axe, along with the Ebony Blade, is actually labelled incorrectly as a one-handed weapon. This was fixed with official patches, so provided your game is up to date, it will now benefit from the two-handed skill, related perks, enchantments, and traits. Interestingly, the design of the axe is taken from the 16th and 17th centuries Eastern European weapon called the Badish. And while the Headsman's Axe is a savage weapon, 
Meloran in the Blue Palace of Solitude will actually mention that it is the better way to die, referring to of course our possibly evil friend Sibyl Stentor, who I have made a full video on and you can check out here. And while we acquired the Headsman's Axe in the simplest and most effective way for all players, there are numerous methods to acquire it. For example, Latar can be killed during the Civil War, he can be killed during the execution when you enter Solitude, he can also be pickpocketed with the Misdirection perk, if he is attacked the Disarm Shout can be used on him, but doing his quest, gaining him as a follower, and then simply taking it out of his inventory is definitely the simplest way. And here it is, the cure for all ailments, the Headsman's Axe in action. <laughs> And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my guide for the unique battle axe, the Headsman's Axe. I do hope this video helped you out and if it did, you'll be very interested in checking out the other Skyrim Special Edition guides I have already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now down there in the old description, you can find links to my social media, be sure to follow me on Twitter and if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a heroic patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.